Hello everyone, welcome to this video lecture of Irrigation Engineering. This is Sukamal Ghosh, Assistant Professor, Civil Engineering Department, Greater Kolkata College of Engineering and Management, JIS Group. In our last lecture, we have discussed the various types of irrigation. Now, in this particular video lecture, we are going to discuss about the methods or the techniques of irrigation. So, basically there are four irrigation methods or techniques. The first one is surface irrigation, the subsurface irrigation, the sprinkler irrigation and the drip irrigation. Further, this surface irrigation can be categorized into three methods. The flooding method of irrigation, the furo method of irrigation and the contour firming method of irrigation. Again, this Flooding method may be classified into two categories, the wild flooding and the control flooding. Further, this control flooding method may be subdivided into free flooding method, the contour flooding method, the border strip flooding method, the check flooding method and the basin flooding method or the ring basin method of irrigation. In this particular video, we are going to discuss about the flooding method and in our subsequent lectures we will discuss about the remaining methods or the techniques of irrigation. It means in our subsequent lectures we will discuss about the furrow method, the contour farming method, the sprinkler method, the drip irrigation method but in this particular video we were going to discuss the whole flooding method means we will discuss the oil flooding method the control flooding method and the various categories of the control flooding methods okay now so the subsurface irrigation technique is a technique in which the water is applied and distributed over the soil surface by the help of gravity okay and and this subsurface irrigation is the most common form of irrigation method throughout the world okay and as we discussed in our previous slide the surface irrigation method can be further classified into flooding method the furrow method and the contour farming method of irrigation okay now now the flooding method is consist of the opening a water channel in a plot or the field so that water can flow freely in all the direction okay and this flooding method cover the surface of the land in a continuous sheet okay now as we discussed earlier the flooding method can be subdivided into the uncontrolled flooding which is also known as wild flooding and the controlled flooding okay so, the uncontrolled flooding which is also known as the wild flooding is the earliest and primitive method of application of water to the land. In this method of irrigation, water is applied by spreading it over the land to be irrigated without any prior preparation of land or you can say without enforcing any kind of control in the form of ditches, levees or borders to guide the flow of water or otherwise restrict the movement on the land. In this method, the water is allowed to flow the natural slope of the land. Actually, in this method, during the season of high stream flow, water is brought from the natural stream or river to the field in permanent supply channels and it is applied or you can say allowed to spread on the land along the natural slope of the land without any control okay now in controlled flooding method the irrigation water is applied by spraying it over the land to be irrigated but with proper control on the flow of water unlike the uncontrolled flooding apart from that in controlled flooding there is a proper control on the quantity of water applied as well 
in the method of control flooding the land is properly graded means the land is properly leveled and the agricultural field are divided into small units by levies or the borders or strips now further the control flooding can be categorized into various methods such as free flooding flooding by contour laterals flooding by the border strips the check basins flooding method the basin flooding or the ring basin flooding method zigzag method etc all the six method of control flooding require the prior preparation of land in the form of the ditches borders or levees or checks etc so let's discuss all these various methods of control flooding so the first type of control flooding is flooding from field channels which is also known as free flooding now in this method the land to be irrigated is divided into small strips by a series of field channels which are supplied water from the supply channels and this field channels are also known as laterals now this laterals may either be aligned at right angles to the sides of field or at right angles to the contour lines if you consider this particular figure you may observe these are the field channels or laterals now this is the side of the field and this is the lateral and it is clearly visible that these laterals are at 90 degree angle with the sides of the field you can observe in this particular figure all the laterals it can be this lateral or this lateral or this lateral all these laterals are at 90 degree angle or you can say at a right angle to the side of the field so this is a plan view where in an agricultural land the field channels or the laterals are aligned at right angle to the side of the field but if we consider this particular figure you may observe that the laterals are not aligned at 90 degree angle with the side of the channel you can see here these are the laterals and this is the side of the channel and the angle between the laterals and the side of the channel is clearly not 90 degree but if you consider this contour lines you may observe that the laterals are at 90 degree angle with the contour lines so this particular figure is a plan view of an agricultural land where the field channels or the laterals are aligned at right angle to the contour lines but in this particular figure you may observe that the laterals are not aligned at 90 degree angle with the contour lines okay now in the field this is the supply channel okay now generally the supply channels are located at the higher edge of the field and are aligned along the general slope of the land okay now so irrigation is possible only one side to the lateral when the laterals are aligned at right angle to the side of the field okay you may observe in this particular figure see this laterals are aligned at a right angle to the sides of the field and you can see here the outlets are provided only one side of the laterals okay but when the laterals or the field channels are aligned at a right angle with the contour lines the outlets can be provided on the both side of the laterals okay see it has been written over here when the laterals are aligned at right angle to the contour lines the irrigation is possible on both side of the lateral as shown in the figure okay now as i said earlier the field channels or the lateral receives water from the main supply channel and discharge excess water in the west channel okay 
you can see here this is the supply channel and this is the west channel this laterals discharge the excess water into the west channel okay now this method is used for both flat as well as relatively steep lands okay now now the contour flooding or the flooding by contour laterals is a special case of free flooding in which the field channels or the laterals are aligned approximately along the contour lines if you consider this particular figure you may observe these are the laterals right and these are the contour lines now it is clearly visible in this particular figure that these laterals are approximately along the contour lines so this laterals are known as contour lateral and the flooding by this contour laterals is one of the special case of free flooding okay in this method the irrigation is possible only one side of the laterals you may observe in this particular figure that the outlets are provided only one side of the laterals same as the case when the laterals were aligned at right angle to the site of the field okay now so in the border strip method the land to be irrigated is divided into a series of long narrow strips which are separated from each other by the borders or burns or levees which may have a height of 15 to 30 cm see you may observe that this is a portion of an agricultural field where the border strip method has been employed so this long narrow beds are called strips so this is a strip this is another strip and these two strips are separated from each other by this levy or border or bond okay so let me change the color this is a levy or border okay and these are the strips you can see here this is an individual strip okay and this is the border or levy or the bond which may have a height of 15 to 30 centimeter now each of these strips is irrigated independently by supplying water at its upper end from a supply channel okay so the strips irrigated from this supply channel you can see here let me change the color see the water is coming through the supply channel or the supply ditch okay and thus the strips or the small beds is irrigated okay you can see here also these are the strips and this is the supply channel okay and from this get the water is coming into the strip and the strips is getting water for the irrigation purpose now in the border strip method to irrigate the strips an underground pipe can also be used in the place of this supply channel okay now this strips have an uniform gentle slope in the longitudinal direction but do not have any cross slope so that the irrigation water applied to the strips is uniformly spread over its entire width without getting accumulated on either side as it flows down the slope so on a relatively flat or the leveled land the strips are laid okay now see this is an 3d representation of the border strip flooding method you can see here these are the levies okay or borders and these are the strips okay so let me write it here 
these are the borders or the levies okay these are the borders or the levies and these are the strips and the strips are irrigated independently from this supply channel okay and as we discussed the height of this borders or the levies is 15 to 30 centimeter okay now the border strip flooding method is most suitable for the high value crops and as we discussed earlier the border strip flooding method requires the labeled land or the relatively flat land apart from that this method is adaptable for most of the soil except the sandy soil the main disadvantage of border strip flooding method is the high initial cost though it requires less labor and low maintenance cost okay now so basically the width of the border strip depends upon the size of the irrigation stream and degrees of the land leveling the practicable and it usually varies from 3 to 15 meter but the width of the border strips can be up to 30 meter wide depending upon the various factors which I have already mentioned. Generally, when the size of the irrigation stream available is small, the width of the strips is reduced. But it is usually not less than the 3 meter. Because with the reduction in the width of the strip, too many borders or the levies will have to form. And if we form too many borders or the levies or the burns, they will occupy the considerable area of the land. Okay, now the length of the border strips depends on the infiltration rate of soil, the slope of the land and the size of the irrigation stream available. For the moderate slopes and small to moderate size of irrigation stream, this length of strips may be adopted for this different kind of soils. Okay, so for sandy loam or the sandy soil, the length of strips for small to moderate size of irrigation stream and for moderate slope is 60 to 120 meter. For the medium loam soil, the length of strip is 100 to 120 meters. And for the clay or the clay loam soil, the length of the strip is 150 to 300 meters. We need to remember this data will be applicable when the slope is moderate and the available irrigation stream is small to moderate size. Now though the maximum length of the strip is written over here 300 meter but the length of the strips can be up to 800 meters long depending upon the various factors which I have already mentioned. Now, the longitudinal slope of the border strip mainly depends on the type of soil and it should neither excessive nor too flat. This is so because the excessive slope will make the water to flow to the lower end of the strip quickly. This causes insufficient irrigation at the upper reaches. Apart from that, it also will cause deep percolation losses at the lower reaches and the soil erosion in the strip. On the other hand, too flat slope will result in very slow movement of water in the strip causing deep percolation at the upper reaches and inadequate irrigation at the lower reaches. Okay. Now in general for coarse textured soils with high infiltration rates, relatively steeper slope may be provided as compared to the fine textured soil with low infiltration rates. These are the safe limit of the longitudinal slope of the border strips. So, for sandy soil or the sandy loam soil, the slope of strips should be between 0.25% to 
0.60% for medium loam soil the longitudinal slope of the strip should be within 0.2% to 0.4% and for the clay soil or the clay loam soil the longitudinal slope of the strips should be within 0.05% to 0.20% okay now so this particular table is showing some values of longitudinal slope of the border the width of the border and the length of the border corresponding to the different type of soils with different kind of infiltration rates okay now the check basin method is the most common method of irrigation used in india as well as in the many other countries of the world in this method similar to the free flooding the land area to be irrigated is divided into small plots or check basins surrounded by checks or the levees or you know kind of burns or low digs now since in this particular method the area to be irrigated is divided into numbers of plots the check basin flooding method is also known as irrigation by plots if you consider this particular figure which is a plan view of a irrigation field where irrigation is being carried out by check basin flooding method these are the check basins okay and these are the levees or you can say the burns and this is the field channel okay where these are the outlets which are provided both side of the field channel now each of these plots or the basins has nearly a level surface the irrigation water is applied by filling the plots with water up to the desired depth without overtopping this levees or the burns okay it means the water which is coming through the this this outlets from the field channel should not overtop this you know uh, levees or the checks or the burns okay now the water is retained in this plots or the basins which allows the water to infiltrate it into the soil okay now this levees are maybe temporary for a single irrigation as in the pre showing irrigation of seasonal crops or maybe for a cropping season to permit number of irrigations to be carried out as per the requirements of the crops also this burns or the levees or the checks may be constructed semi permanently for repeated use in the case of paddy fields now the size of this levees or the burns depends on the depth of the water to be impounded as well as on the stability of the soil when it get wet now the size of this check basins depends on the infiltration rate of the soil in general the size of the basin may vary from you know uh, 1 meter square to 1 or 2 hectares or even more generally the check basins which has a size of 1 meter square used for growing vegetables and other intensive cultivation and for the check basins which has a size of 1 or maybe 2 hectares or more are used for growing the rice under wetland condition however for medium soil plots the area of you know kind of 0.4 sorry 0.04 04 to 0.05 hectare may be suitable further if you consider the shape of these basins we should know that the rectangular plots are preferable compared to the square plots okay so let me write it here 
the preferable shape of this basins are rectangular okay generally the land which is level or is uh, very gently sloping the basins are uh, rectangular in shape okay however for sloping lands the basin or plots are prepared by constructing the levees along the contours having the vertical intervals of maybe uh, 60 to 120 millimeter and correcting them with the cross levees at convenient places these are called the contour levees or contour checks okay now in this case the plots or the basins have odd shapes depending upon the configurations of the contour lands okay now the check flooding method is very suitable for the soils having high permeability okay see we have already discussed that in check basin flooding method we retain the water through the levees and the plots and allows it to infiltrate into the soil but if we employ this check basin flooding method in a land which has very low permeability then the water which we are retaining through this levees and the check basin will not be able to infiltrate with the soil or with the soil with low permeability that is why this check flooding method is most suitable for the soils which is having higher porosity or permeability okay The ring basin method of irrigation is a special form of check basin method of irrigation which is used for irrigation of orchids means the enclosure with fruit trees. This ring basin method is also frequently used to irrigate the plants in gardens. Okay. See from this particular plan view of ring basin flooding method you may observe that each of the plants are enclosed by the circular channels which are called as basin okay or you can say ring basin because it is a circular channel now this ring basins or the basins are connected to the field channels okay and the small field channels or the field ditches are fed from the supply channel okay you can see this is a 3d view of ring basin flooding method where you may observe this is the supply channel and the supply channels are feeding this let me change the color you can see this supply channel is feeding the fill channel okay and the water is retaining in the ring basins and it allows the water to percolate or you can say infiltrate to the soil okay now one ring basin may be formed for two or more trees okay so it is not compulsory that a ring basin will form only one tree a ring basin may be formed for you know two or more trees like this particular case okay now sometimes some small ditches are connected by two ring basins like this particular case okay see this is a small fill channel or fill ditches which is not directly feeding from this supply channel okay so this is all about the flooding method of irrigation in our next lecture, we will discuss the remaining techniques or the methods of irrigation. Till then, stay safe and stay happy. Thank you.